I'm Dan Titus. That's Raphael Johnson. We uh, are going to talk about Week 18, Part 2. The All-Star Game is now a wrap, so we'll have some thoughts on that, as well as some news that dropped. Man, Giannis injury at this time of the year, not good for fantasy managers. But before I kick it off, Raph, what's good, bro? Did you enjoy the All-Star Weekend? What were your thoughts just overall? I enjoyed it. Uh, Saturday night was was solid. I think yeah. I've come to learn to temper my expectations on the weekend. So I don't know. You see people very upset about Sunday and, and whatnot. That's their right, but I, we're we kind of know what it is at this point. So I don't really get too riled up about it personally. Yeah, I feel like you can't. Um, I saw that there was some criticism for Shea Goes Alexander being very honest about like, hey, how can we increase the competition level? of Sunday and he's like well you got to incentivize us to do it and case mm-hmm. in point like you're looking at Giannis going out there playing for 20 seconds like I'm not re-entering <laughs> my wrist for this yeah. like no mm-hmm. um so yeah I, I think the Elam ending this is like probably the first time that didn't really work out very well because yeah. there was such a substantial lead going into mm-hmm. the fourth quarter but you know ultimately man I, I love the break of all-star like it's a week long I love all the conversations with the athletes you know the opportunities for people to make a name for themselves like Mac McClung mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how much we'll see him actually in the league, but you know, he had some dope, he had some dope dunks. Yeah, so yeah. It was pretty cool. Um, and we'll talk about the three point contest later. Horrible, horrible <laughs> guess by me on Kevin Herter, who was actually worse mm-hmm. than Julius Randle, who was throwing up air ball. So I don't know how that even yeah. worked out that way. Um, but let's talk about the the big news at the top, man. Gr- uh, Jonas Antetokopo injured his wrist versus the Bulls before the, the all star break. And it looks like he's going to miss some games. Seems to be like a pain tolerance issue. But mm-hmm. what have you heard in terms of the latest on Giannis? That's pretty much what it was. Uh, he went to New York to get evaluated further on Monday. They found that he didn't need surgery, which is good news. Uh, bad news, according to ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski, it's going to be a case of once the pain subsides, he'll be back on the court. When that will be, we don't know. So that leaves you kind of a... Um, An iffy timeline for you have him in your fantasy leagues. He's underperformed a bit, I think, in terms of fantasy value. He's ranked outside of the top 100 in nine-cat value. But that's still a huge miss to have on your roster if you're looking to get in prime playoff position or simply get back into playoff position in your fantasy league. Yeah, at this point, um, you just got to play this waiting game, and this this really yeah. does suck. I mean, Giannis is a warrior. I mean, we saw it in the playoffs years ago when he hyperextended his knee, then came back, and then wound up winning the championship afterwards. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think this guy is a dog. He'll figure out some way to get back there. Fortunately for the Bucks, though, they're in a really good standing in the Eastern Conference. Yeah. They were just peaking at the right time, and for this injury mm-hmm. to happen, definitely not ideal. But uh, what do you think is the fallout from this? Like, are you trying to buy low on Drew Holiday, maybe Chris Middleton? Uh, Brooke Lopez should probably be uh, pick up a substantial role here if if Giannis is going to be out. But is there anyone else mm-hmm. that you've kind of looked at, even from a waivers perspective, that can fill the void of Giannis? Probably not many. No, it's pretty tough because in the past, you kind of knew that you could rely on Bobby Portis to be that guy. Even yeah. though he would be rostered in most leagues by now, um, he's out injured as well. So you can't really count on him. Um, even like a Pat Connaughton or Grayson Allen, those guys have been starting. I don't know if there's enough value there in terms of consistency to be worth taking a, a shot on. Maybe you, get, you grab him for the end of this week if you can, if your your rosters aren't locked, and see what you get there and, and see how it goes from that point. But, yeah, I don't really see too much value beyond the guys that you mentioned. And, and like we all know, they're going to be rostered already in most, if not all, leagues. Yeah, that was my thought to it. I think Grayson Allen, maybe he gets a little bit more staying power, but he's primarily just threes, points, yeah. and, and steals. And then Pat Connaughton can give you some sneaky rebounds. But, um, you know, their depth kind of changed. We'll see. Maybe this – maybe Jay Crowder gets into that that lineup a little bit quicker um, mm-hmm. because they're going to need some front court play to, uh, to, to kind of weather the storm while Giannis is going through this injury. Um, also, Russell Westbrook is joining the Clippers in a surprise move. It was rumored that he was going to L.A. originally, and then they kind of mucked up some kind of conversation about him potentially going to the Bulls. Um, But it is the Clippers that is going to be his next destination. First, what are your thoughts on the move? Um, What does this do to Terrence Mann, more importantly? Yeah, I think Terrence Mann hasn't been a great fantasy option either way, even though he's been starting. I don't think there's going to be a severe impact just because of that. And I don't see a situation where Russ just jumps into the starting lineup right away, obviously. I don't even know if that's going to be the case down the line. Um, 
it's a peculiar move. You know, maybe they're betting. I don't even think you can bet on like the revenge factor with the Lakers because the Lakers yeah. might not even be in the playoffs. So, <laughs> you know, the poor shooting. And at this point, I think he's the type of player who's going to need a full off season to really change how he plays to expect that on the fly is very difficult to do. So it'll make, it'll obviously make for conversation, but in terms of fantasy value, I don't really think it does too much. Maybe if you're thinking about Bones Highland, which I don't think he should have been, maybe that impact, this move impacts him, but I don't really see too much going on there. I mean, talk about a come up for Russ, man. He went from the 13th yeah. team in the Western Conference <laughs> to, the, to the fourth. So I don't think he's really too upset about his situation. Um, I do think it's going to take time to gel. And the interesting part about it is like you're playing alongside Kawhi Leonard and, and Paul George, two guys that can certainly facilitate the offense. So I am kind of curious as to see what role he's going to play. Um, only point guard eligibility right now in Yahoo leagues, which kind of mm-hmm. sucks because I think we could see Russ kind of play a combination of both. We'd like him to get that dual eligibility at shooting guard. But um, at this point, yeah, I feel like I'm a little bit concerned about Terrence, man. Anytime you get competition, it's definitely going to, uh, hamper expectations a little bit but i think he does have a little bit of an edge being that he was already the de facto point guard with uh reggie jackson and, and john wall now out of the building but bones highland i think is another guy that's probably gonna be negatively impacted here um that just stepped in another guard veteran guard that that can play yeah. above him so um yeah i think it's kind of tough for uh the clippers at least those two guys right now in the, at the onset but we'll see how this kind of shakes out and hopefully the, the clippers can maintain their status here or else this is going to be bad news for Russ and uh, whatever his future plans are. Um, talk about the Hawks real quick, because Nate McMillan got fired after the All-Star break. I feel like this is going to happen at some point. Yeah. I don't know why they waited this long when Trey Young was already being very vocal about what he what, what wasn't happening um, mm-hmm. that he wanted to see happen, and he's already throwed, thrown out some potential trade options or you know in the offseason asking for a trade. So I don't know. I don't know why they waited this long to do it. What are your thoughts on the timing? And do you think that this does anything for the Hawks rotation going forward from a fantasy perspective? I'd understand the timing if they had someone in the all-star game, you know, you kind of don't want him to have to answer those questions, but the only person they had there from off the top of my head was AJ Griffin. And he was in the uh, rookie. Rick, yeah. The rising stars, in the, rookie, yeah. the rising stars game on Friday. <laughs> so how much is he going to be asked about it? They should have just done it then. Then there was the excuse that Monday was a federal holiday, so they didn't want to fire him. (laughs) It's like, look, man. (laughs) Had a respect for the holiday. Let's do this on Sunday night. (laughs) Yeah. I I don't want to come off as being disrespectful of President's Day or anything like that. So (laughs) I'll I'll put that out there. But, yeah, the situation doesn't make much – it didn't make much sense. We've heard John Collins be mentioned in trade rumors for how long now? Like, it's going on two, three years. If you're Trey Young, I think I don't – you certainly don't want to put this on him because we don't have that type of information. But it's like two coaches have been let go while it's supposedly your team. I mean, we're not going to ask any questions about that. Hey, look, there's fire, man. Yeah. Um, This guy might be not – he might be a tough person to coach. I don't know, or Mm – I don't know, but you trade for DeJounte Murray. Yeah. You acquire Sadiq Bay at the deadline, which also mm. is like a head scratchy move. Like, I mean, maybe that's your insurance for John Collins when he leaves next year. But I don't know, man. This team just has so much chemistry issues, it seems like. And I don't know that getting rid of the head coach now is really going to solve that. They're sitting at they don't what? Need... They're like eighth in, the, ninth? eighth in the East yeah, right now. Eighth, eighth, ninth in the East. Okay. Yeah, they're tied with the uh, – or they're half game – ahead of the uh, the Washington Wizards, which by all accounts, man, they might be in a better situation uh, than the Hawks right now. Like, it's going to be funny to see if they can go on this run. But um, what are you doing with Sadiq Bey, by the way? I mean, he's he was a rosterable 12-team guy before in Detroit, but now that he's in this log jam, he did see 20 minutes in their last game. But, like, I don't know that I would trust holding on to him just given how much wing depth they have now. Yeah, I don't think you can, you can trust him at this point. Um, like you said – They've got a log jam at those positions. I would assume that you want to see more of A.J. Griffin and Jalen Johnson, especially yeah. if they slip out of the play-in conversation. Um, but, yeah, 20 minutes per game for Sadiq Bey would be one thing if he was giving you, like, consistent defensive production. Maybe you could get something out of that there, but I don't see it happening. Um, and you mentioned chemistry. That front office doesn't even have chemistry. 
So <laughs> how, how are the players going to have it, you know? Yeah, I mean, Landry Fields is going to have to answer some questions, man. Uh, it's mm-hmm. been a rough go for the first first go around here. A lot of – I mean, you, you can pull off a deal like DeJounte Murray. I think people are expecting immediate results. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm really curious as to what's next for this this Hawks team. Um, What else here? Kevin Love went to the Heat. Uh, I think that was kind of a surprise move. I, I thought he would have been a really good fit with Philadelphia, but – um, he would have been in a backup role, whereas like on the on the Heat, they don't really have any front court players, right? Behind Bam, it's they're running, you know, Caleb Martin at, at the four at, at times. So, uh, what do you think of Kevin Love? Is he an ad in fantasy? I think he is. Um, like you mentioned, they've been playing undersized at the four in terms of Caleb Martin, and even if you're in a backup role, you basically have Orlando Robinson. You know, as the other backup, you know, we're, yeah, Omer Yurtsevin hasn't played yet this season. You're not going to nope. expect much from him. So I think if Kevin Love can get 25 minutes per game in like a combo role where he plays the four and the five, you're not going to get too many minutes at the five just because Bam's playing like 35 per game. But I think he can get enough minutes if they use him at both positions to where he can be of some value in deeper leagues. Yeah, and importantly, Dwayne Dedman was shipped out, so that's one yeah. less person that he had to compete with in the front court. Uh, threes, rebounds, points, you know, sneaky assists there. Like, I think Kevin Love is certainly a 12-team ad now, and you're right. I think it's the the flexibility that he can play both the power forward and center positions um, and really p- provide that wing threat that, you know, this team struggles from beyond yeah. the perimeter sometimes. So, and within all the injuries that they have, I think this is a good landing spot for Love to actually produce, and that's probably why he decided to go to Miami, knowing that he would actually get a role because he was outside of the rotation uh, for the Cleveland Cavaliers. So on the flip side to that, uh, what are you seeing from the the Cavs' perspective with Kevin Love now out of the way? Does anyone benefit from that from a fantasy uh, point of view? Um, Maybe an Isaac Okoro. I think he's already starting. Maybe him, um, a Dean Wade. But I don't really know if you're going to rush out and add Dean Wade just because of this move. So no, no. Yeah, I don't. I think if anything, we may just see Evan Mobley play more, you know, or stay around like that 32, 33 minutes per game, which would be good for him because he's developing into a stud at that position. And you play alongside of Jared Allen, he's got good chemistry with him. So I don't really know if I'd rush out to add a coral. He had some good games before the break, but. I still need to see more from him before I trust him fully. Yeah, and Cleveland is now fourth in the Eastern Conference after the All-Star break. I'm curious, though, like how that's going to impact them in the long haul because they did lose some depth there. And I don't know that you want to rely on Dean Wade or they're ready to rely on Dean Wade yet. Um, But I think there's also they've also seen J.B. Bickerstaff also play more small ball, which is why they were probably like, all right, I think we can make Kevin Love expendable now. Let's run Karis LeVert more at the three. You know, Isaac Okoro at the four gives them more wing depth uh, for mm-hmm. sure. But, you know, I'm curious to see, like, I don't – maybe this gives some staying power to, to Karis Levert and Isaac Okoro, but both yeah. of those guys definitely more so. Levert's probably over 40% rostered in most leagues. Um, Okoro's pretty low rostered, so I'm curious to see if his, his minutes increase actually, um, you know, goes into some fancy viability down the stretch here. But I'm not rushing for Isaac yet. I want to see some more yeah. – um, but Karis LeVert, I think, does have some staying power here. Um, Chicago Bulls, Pat Bev's going home. And uh, <laughs> I think that this is a – I feel like this is a good spot for him. The only problem is, is like, I don't really know how I can – I don't know. The Bulls guard position is so bizarre right now. And Lonzo yeah. Ball is going to be missing the rest of the season. So, obviously, a move that they needed to make because they were expecting him to kind of make up some progress at the, in the course mm-hmm. of the season didn't happen. But what do you think that this does for Io? Uh, Desumu and as well as as uh, Alex Caruso, does that kind of tank their value? Remain kind of the same? I mean, are you picking up Pat Bev? What, what's your thoughts? I think their value remains the same because it wasn't very high to begin with. Um, you know, <laughs> so, so yeah, I really, unfortunately, it wasn't. I think, you know, getting Beverly in there is going to help them defensively because I think that's what they are counting on Lonzo Ball for. In addition to the passing, he right. just made them a much better defensive team at the point of attack. Maybe this leads to Desumu dropping out of the starting lineup, but I don't like I said, I don't think that's gonna have a major impact just because he wasn't a great fantasy option as a starter. Um if that happens, then maybe you do add Pat Bev, but I, mean, I I'm kind of in a wait and see pattern with him right now to see what his role will be and how many minutes he's gonna play. Right. 
Yeah, I don't. I mean, I just gotta see how this shakes out, man. Um, I feel like Io is the one that's gonna be the one that's gonna be left out on the street here eventually. Um, especially with the Bulls, they're sitting uh, right now. Oof, man, they're sliding. They're in like what tenth, eleventh. They're in eleventh, I believe. Yeesh. So they're gonna have to make a run here. Demar Derozan. Hopefully, that All Star break was enough time for him to get his thigh injury together. They're gonna need to make a run now. So. They can't afford to wait a wait, wait around and, and get some production. Defensively, they need to step up. So, yeah, I think Pat's going to have a role here, um, at least in the short term, to kind of fire up this defense, get some energy in the building, and uh, hopefully get this Bulls to play better. Because if the, given their standing, man, are you surprised they didn't make a bigger move at the deadline? Because, like, I don't know. Yeah. They're, they're kind of in that Raptors point of view. And it's like the Raptors like, all right, let's go get Pirtle. And like actually make a run for this. They were like, uh, oh, we'll just kind of stay put and kind of see how this shakes out. In either direction. You know, either yeah. you try to make a big move that can boost your team, or you try to move one of those contracts, you know, to with an eye towards the future. But yeah. And I think the tough thing for them, they couldn't really do the latter because Orlando has the rights to their first round pick. Exactly. So Good point. they're kind of in that wizards no man's land that no NBA team wants to be in just with fewer draft assets. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we didn't spend too much on the All-Star break, but just want to get your thoughts on Mac McClung being the dunk champ and Damian Lillard absolutely abusing the three-point competition. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was awesome. Um, Mac said he had some surprises in store, and he certainly did. Um, he's He's been a popular player in the basketball scene for a long time now, going back to his high school days. But it, it kind of shows the disconnect between people who only watch the NBA through that traditional TV lens and a lot of the younger crowd who uses like social media, you know, to watch their highlights and whatnot. So I think a lot of the younger people knew exactly what he was capable of, maybe not right. to that level. Uh, while the old timers were in for a bit of a surprise. So that was pretty <laughs> fun to see. Yeah, man. Uh, I remember Mac McClung back in the days when he broke Allen Iverson's record. It's yeah. like, yo, who's mm -hmm. this white guy that broke it like <laughs> out of nowhere, but super athletic, always had handle, good shooter, um, just always looked like a kid. And uh, yeah. his journey to the league now has been pretty interesting. He's been in and out of the G League. He balled out in the summer league at several highlights um, this past year that were like, yo, who's no one's doing these moves. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that he can actually land a spot. I think if one thing it, it did give him at least a platform to kind of build his brand a little, up a little bit more to those casuals mm -hmm. that, you know, like the shacks of the world that are like, Oh, who is this guy that I've never seen before? I don't know your yeah. name. Um, whereas you said like basketball heads that, that came up on the, the YouTube era definitely knew who Mac McClung was, but those dunks, I mean, the five forty that was cool, but yeah. the, the one that he did where he tapped the glass in reverse, yeah, that, uh, was... that was so clean and like flawless execution too. It's not, I can't mm -hmm. remember the last time someone actually did three dunks on the first attempt. And actually, went yeah. through, like I said, horrors these Nate Robinson days of mm -hmm. you know 13 attempts and all that. But um, that was cool. Uh, I gotta I gotta shout out myself on this horrible Kevin Herter pick. Uh, Darren Fox was talking about. It. He's like, yeah, man, like I we knew he was gonna do all right. I think he was a little nervous, but like anytime mm -hmm. a jump shooter's in the the three point competition, they tend to struggle a little bit. I don't really consider him a jump shooter. Like he gets off like like no air on his jump shot, but like yeah. I don't know. That was a horrible pick by me, but Damian Lillard absolutely flamed out. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Just just heater. And Halliburton. I feel like uh, you know, the, the little hitch in his J, I never really paid, I don't know, in the flow of the game, I'm not paying attention to it like that, but to yeah. watch him do it over and over again, mm -hmm. it's pretty interesting. He's kind of like Kevin Martin, the way he's got this unique form that as long as he yeah. gets it into that spot, it's pretty good. Um, but yeah, he surprised me. Buddy healed your call. Definitely was so close to getting there, mm -hmm. uh, but Dame, it was Dame's night, his first time yeah. getting the three-point competition. So, yeah, I think that that was fun. I feel like three-point is usually the thing that I'm expecting most to be the most hype and exciting each All-Star weekend, but, um, mm -hmm. yeah, really cool. But anyway, let's get to the injury discussions. Um, Anthony Simon is going to be missing four to six weeks with an ankle injury. That happened right before All-Star break ha uh, yeah. started, and so now we have the diagnosis. Um, what are you picking up here? Is it a shade? We talked about it last week, but with more knowledge now of the timeline, does that make Shaden Sharp more valuable? Matisse Thibel? Um, what are your thoughts there? Maybe Cam Reddish? Yeah, I, I would lean more towards Sharp and, and Thibel. Um, Thibel, I think the injury protects him whenever Jeremy Grant gets back because he's, he's in concussion protocols. I'm not sure if he's out yet, but 
Right. I think those two guys are the main ones. Um, just because in the case of, of Sharp, we've seen flashes from him offensively. Thibault shot the ball well in his first few games with Portland, and we know what he's going to bring to the table defensively. So I think this is more reason to go and grab him. Cam Reddish, I need to see more. I can't really trust him, to be honest with you. I know he, he started those few games before the break, but yeah, Cam Reddish is the one guy like he didn't play in New York. He really didn't play as much as he probably wanted to in Atlanta either. I think you want to see a bit more from him before kind of hitching your wagon to him in fantasy. Yeah, I'm not overly confident in Matisse Thibault outside of his defense. He's gotten four mm-hmm. stocks in his first two games, seen over 26 minutes in each of those games, which is very encouraging. But man, that lack of offensive output, you know, two, 30 minutes, two points, one rebound, yeah. one assist, like that's just not going to do it. Um, but if you do need that stocks boost, he's 100% a guy that you want to add. Uh, Shannon Sharp, though, I think has shown some progress in his game. Um, he's scoring more, obviously, gets you the three pointers, but uh, he did get three steals a couple of games ago. So if we can see him doing on both ends, I would definitely prioritize him. He's 26% rostered compared to 25% for Matisse Thibel. So if you have a choice, they both could still be on your waivers. I lean shade and sharp as you suggested, but it all depends on what your team needs are. If you need defense, go Thibel. If you need a little bit more offensive output with more rebounds and assists, go shade and sharp. Cause I think he's going to uh, definitely get into some more um, opportunities here. And also the versatility for him in Yahoo, he gets shooting guards, small forward and power forward eligibility, which you know, not many people get three three different uh, positions on their uh, their roster roster ship. So, uh, very cool thing for Shaden Sharp and his his outlook going forward, at least in the short term. Um, OG Ananobi looks like he's going to be returning, expected to return on Thursday. Uh, what does that mean for the Raptors front? Uh, the Raptors rotation? Are you expecting big things? Uh, this is a guy that I'm considering a buy low right now. There's still a day yeah. left. Um, the manager may be sleep at the wheel, not knowing he's coming back, but I would definitely be trying to target him being that he was a top 40, top 50 player for most of the season. And now with this Raptors team, now with Pirtle there, I think they actually get a little bit better. Yeah, I think you expect top 40, top 50 value from him, you know, back in the lineup. Precious Achu is the one who takes the hit. I'd imagine he's going to be coming off the bench um, when Ananobi is back in there. I think Yaka Pirtle is going to be fine um, because they need a center. And that's why they traded for him. So I think Pirtle's going to be fine. Um, Precious at you, if you have him, that's going to be the concern there in terms of fancy. Yeah, yeah, I think. And uh, I'd also argue Chris Boucher, too. Um, mm-hmm. While he's been a solid, you know, gadget guy, six man, um, he's been thriving because OG Ananobi hasn't been around. So I think they're all going to kind of take a hit with all those uh, Raptors players playing upwards of 30 plus minutes. Um, I think we'll see his production kind of go down as well as Precious Achua, which was already in doubt, um, you know, coming back here. So um, Kevin Porter Jr. has begun on the court work. Haven't seen a direct timeline of when he's going to return, but we know the Rockets standing. They're clearly mailing it in. Um, Are you expecting him to come back anytime soon? And if not, you know, does it still mean Kevin Porter Jr.? Or excuse me, Kevin Porter Jr. KJ Martin. KJ, KJ Martin. Yeah. Uh, keeps his, his footing in the starting lineup as well as uh, maybe we see more of, um, you know, Tabari Eason potentially Sorry. too with Jabari Smith uh, struggling. Yeah. Like you said, Houston's going nowhere. Um, you have your, your team governor tell people at a Mardi Gras parade, pray for Wimby. <laughs> I think that, that makes your intentions quite clear, you know, so. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't think they're going to be um, rushing Kevin Porter Jr. out in that court anytime soon. Um, so, yeah, if you have K.J. Martin, hold on to him, because even once KPJ is back, you have to imagine there's going to be some minutes restrictions in play as well, because foot injuries can be the absolute hell for a basketball player. So I don't see them rushing him back anytime soon. K.J. Martin, obviously in the mix. Um, Tari Eason. You're hoping you can get to 25 minutes per game. For whatever reason, you're not getting him to that point. I know you have um, Jabari Smith in the mix, but Tari can play the three. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, yeah, he can. Here? Right. So, yeah, I don't know. I think KJ Martin's the big winner, but yeah, Tari Eason as well. Do you think Steven Silas is going to get fired at the end of the season? 
I feel bad because this isn't the job he signed up for. Is they had right, uh, no. James Harden, they had Russell Westbrook, right. and they were all gone. Um, but that being said, it's not so much the winning loss, the win loss record, but you're not really seeing the progress in terms of the skill, the development. Uh, right, you're exactly right, uh, and that's kind of what the big thing is here. Like Shangun, they're even playing around with his minutes for far too long, so. Yeah, I, it's unfortunate that you get your first full-time head coaching job in a situation like this. But yeah, I, I think they're probably going to let him go at the season's end. I wouldn't; it wouldn't shock me at all. Yeah, me either. And I, I think you you hit the nail on the head. It's more about he signed up for a completely different situation. Now he's having to be the mentor, the, the motivator, the developer. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that he's any of those things. Um, he's a very quiet, uh, very hu humble, soft-spoken guy. Um, and I think he's got some egos in that. He's definitely got some young egos in that locker room that yeah. I don't. I just don't think it resonates, right? And mm -hmm. I think we've seen it by his scheming and, as you said, the the, the minutes fluctuation between star players that aren't Jalen Green and and, K, and K, uh, Kevin Porter Jr. Yeah. Um, he just has to figure out something else different. If he doesn't, like he's not going to have a job because mm -hmm. it's been it's been. It's been tough to watch all season the way that yeah. uh, Singoon, they should clearly be utilizing him like like a Jokic and, and a Demata Sabonis just playing through their big man. So we'll see what happens. But, yeah, I'm not overly optimistic that he's going to have a, a a future here in Houston for much longer. Um, so if you're not – so I know there's many ways to get your injury information. For me, I've always gone to Roto World, so you can tell the people uh, what, what they need to do to go to Roto World to get the injury, the latest injury information. Yeah, you just need to go to your preferred app store and download the Roto World app um, to receive those breaking player news. Uh, you can favorite players on your fantasy rosters or your DFS rosters so you can get the latest injury updates, player news, and everything else delivered right to your phone. Yeah, and I got my latest update uh, just now, actually, about Jamal Murray making a return. He's also expected mm -hmm. to play. Definitely missed that. That's going to be big for the Nuggets. Um, do you think that that does anything for anyone's fantasy value? I think Bruce Brown takes a slight hit just because it'll go back to that reserve role, but not to the point where I think fantasy managers should drop him if they already have him. He's, he's given good value regardless of where he's been within a Nuggets rotation all season long. So Bruce Brown would be the, the obvious name, but not to the point where you should be looking to drop him. Great point. Yeah, I, I do roster Bruce Brown in quite a few leagues and Love the versatility, but I think we're going to see mm -hmm. his assists go down just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, he'll still definitely be a rosterable guy, but you know, don't expect too much as, as to what he's been doing as of late. But still, backup point guard right now, de facto. So I think he'll still have plenty of opportunities to shine in a fan from a fancy perspective. And um, also, make sure bundle price for draft guide. Um, every season, it's draft season, right? Get your roto mm -hmm. your roto world draft guide bundle today and dominate your football baseball or basketball drafts packed with profiles rankings projections order today and get all three draft guides for the price of two plus use promo code bundle five and save an extra five dollars at checkout make sure you do that the roto world draft guides are the best especially during baseball season just mm -hmm. finished a baseball draft with the folks at nbc sports edge so super fun make sure you get some insider information right there all right um, let's talk about the schedule, man. Only uh, several games because we're, you know, Thursday to Thursday um, with mm -hmm. the games. Um, six teams play three games. So if you're looking for waivers to get the most um, volume, I would look at the Cavs, the Kings, the Nuggets, the Raptors, the Thunder, and the Warriors. And then we have tons of back-to-backs. Um, Thursday and Friday looks at four teams, Cavs, Kings, Thunder, and Warriors. And then two on the Saturday, Sunday, which would be the Raptors and the Nuggets with the rest of the teams, 24 of them playing two games. Um, and two of those teams, three of those teams, excuse me, have a Friday, Saturday back-to-back, -back, that being the Heat, the Hornets, and the Knicks. Um, from those teams, who are you looking to add in fantasy this for the rest of Week 18? Well, the obvious name is Dante DiVincenzo. Um, to have 43% roster in Yahoo. Um, you know, Warriors with a back-to-back, -back, even though they're coming back from the All-Star break, we still – there's still a chance that we see them kind of injury manage some of those guys. Um, Andrew Wiggins dealing with personal issues, so he may not be available Thursday. That's even more reason to get him. Um, you know, Kevon Looney, I'm sure you can probably expand on him a bit, but that man's an absolute warrior, 
and he's not sitting down unless he's legitimately injured. So. Yeah, I agree. Uh, 43% rostered for Dante DiVincenzo. He's still probably widely available in 10 team leagues. I think he's going to be valuable with Steph out. Um, so I agree with that. Kevon Looney as well. He's 47% rostered. So May not be there in the deep leagues, but I, I think he's going to provide a lot of value for fantasy managers here. The Warriors need to pick it up. Um, mm -hmm. They still have not figured it out on the road. And uh, one thing that we know is that Steve Kerr trusts Kevon Looney. Um, I think we're going to start seeing him get into a tighter rotation, and that's going to be great for him. He doesn't need a lot of volume um, in order to be productive. He has one of the best assist to turnover ratios in the league, so he's not going to hurt you in mm -hmm. many categories. He can shoot free throws respectively at an around 70 percent doesn't go to the line much but he's really good at field goal percentage rebounds and blocks so um i think that this is a big that you can that you can grab for mainly the the latter stretch of this le of this uh season here going into the playoffs i think he's going to be one of the better bigs uh that you can actually afford off waivers maybe you lost out on mason Plumley, going to the clippers pick up kevon looney you'll get that production right back so uh minus the assists mm -hmm. but um yeah i really like kevon looney um yeah, out of the other teams, man, it's it's really interesting because, you know, having that we had this break of All-Star game, um, not much injury news has really come out from that. But um, another player I've been kind of intrigued by is Jalen Williams, not uh, – this is J-A-Y-L-I-N yes. Williams. Of this the is J-Will. J-Will, there we go. Yeah. J-Dub and J-Will. I'm yes. talking J-Will. Um, and he's only 4% rostered in Yahoo leagues right now, but knowing the Thunder and what they like to do down the stretch – Number one, Mark Degnall has not committed to a center at all this season. Mm -hmm. And so what may, gives me any promise that he's going to do it with, with Jay Will, I think it's just the opportunity that he has. Like, yeah. this has been a very fluid position. He's played pretty well over the last several of games. I think we're going to see his minutes go up when they realize that they have, you know, nothing to play for, really. Um, and they're going to be going towards, you know, the outside looking in of the playoffs. So... I don't know. I think Jalen Williams is, definitely has a spot here to kind of shine with Pokushevsky on the shelves, Jeremiah Robinson Earl kind of falling out of favor. I think they want to see what this young guy has. And um, so far, it's been pretty good. I think he'll give you solid rebounds, blocks potentially um, when he gets more minutes. So 4% um, rostered, very deep league ad, but I think this is a guy that you want to stash because the Oklahoma City Thunder have a tendency to give these young boys some run towards the end of the season. Um. Yeah, that's a good point. And I just wanted to rewind to the Raptors. With three games this week, you may want to hold off on dropping a precious at you or a Chris Boucher. Good point, until yeah. Until week 19. Um, you got three games. We've seen them play their stars heavy minutes. I don't know if they do that with OG if he's back on Thursday. But it may be a good time to kind of hold on to those guys, see what happens. And then week 19 is when you can drop them. Yeah, that's a great point. Um and as you said, that there could be a little bit of a minute restriction there. Um, definitely want to hold on to Boucher and Shua through the weekend. And then also, I, I mentioned him before, and his roster shifts dropped quite a bit, and that's Karis LeVert. He's only 35% rostered, so mm -hmm. he's widely available. I think, you take a, I think you take a flyer on him, especially with the Cavs playing three games this weekend. Um, he really can't hurt you in too many areas other than field goal percentage. But we'll see what this Cavs rotation looks like with Kevin Love out of there. But I think he's going to find his way into more minutes with the, the Cavs playing a little bit smaller. Um, don't know that I'm going to go there with Isaac Okoro quite yet, but somebody to keep an eye on uh, for sure. Um, any other guys you want to mention uh, that you think is worthy of picking up in lieu of injuries, buyouts, um, or just coming out of the all-star break? Well, we do have an interesting question, which kind of plays into what someone asked me on Twitter over the weekend. Devin Vassell, um, he should be back pretty soon in San Antonio. Kodak Vision wants to know our expe expectation for him rest of the season in nine cat. And what I was asked on Twitter was whether or not they should drop Malachi Branham for Vassell. I said, absolutely not. Tried to be as polite as possible in doing so, obviously. But I think Devin Vassell... I think a lot of people still hold on to him. I don't know if I'd expect that top 75 value that he's capable of, but maybe he could be a sneaky top 100 guy if he gets enough minutes the rest of the season. What do you think? Yeah, I'm not dropping him for Branham yet. Um, I was literally just looking it up, and I see him doing some three-on-three -three court work, but he has no yeah. timetable for his return. So, like, I'm not mm – -hmm. I would – if he's out there on waivers, I think he's definitely worth an IL stash, 100%, because he's yeah. at least doing things. 
Um, but I kind of put them in that Kevin Porter Jr. territory of like, they're not good. Do they need to rush them back for the final, you know, stretch of these games when they already know that they're going to the lottery? I don't know. Um, so I think that that's more opportunity for Brandon, a guy that's actually producing now, and that's what you want. Um, mm-hmm. If the cell comes back in the playoffs, awesome, but he's also going to have a minutes restriction. So, like, I don't know how much more you're actually going to be getting long term from him. Um, so I would hold Branham. If you have the space to pick it up in IL, do it because, I mean, maybe by the end of the season, by week 22, you're in the championship, you're getting, you know, 28, 29 minutes from Devin Vassell. That's pretty worthwhile. So, yeah, I would stash him, but I wouldn't drop Branham as a result. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, final thoughts. Got some uh, – wanted to run through a couple of names of buying and selling with you. Um, one of the best – one of the top guys I think that I want to buy right now is Jeremy Grant. And that's really mm-hmm. because of the, the Anthony Simons injury. Dame doesn't really have too many other options to rely on. And I, Jeremy, Jeremy Grant was one of their prize acquisitions this off season. Um, what are your thoughts on that? And is that somebody that you'd be interested in assuming he's going to be coming out of this concussion protocol yeah. pretty soon? Yeah, I think that's a good point. Um, they don't have too many other consistent scoring options. Obviously, Yusuf Nurkic also being injured, so that's that's someone someone else that they've been been without. So um, yeah, yeah, that I think Grant would be a good one. Um, Alperin Shingun, great call. I like him, but I don't like the situation he's in. Like they need to stop playing around with my man's minutes. They, <laughs> play you know, play him, play him thirty plus per game. Like with all due yeah. respect to Bruno Fernando and um, I, didn't they trade Bruno? They did trade Bruno. They they traded him back to Atlanta, so he's out of there. Mm -hmm. But Usman Garuba, like, no. (laughs) Boban, love him, but he's not going to play over Shengu. Great, great actor, great actor, but not a hooper. (laughs) I love Boban, but yeah, come on, man. Shengu needs to be playing. I'm I'm not going to say heavy minutes because he's going to need his breathers every once in a while, but. He needs to be on that court more than he has been more consistently, I believe, even though he is starting. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, and I think we have one more question uh, before we get out of here. Ooh. Ooh, Wiseman or Love rest of season 12 team nine cat? Uh, man, that's a tough question. I, I, I probably lean Love just because he's more fantasy friendly. Um, he does more, but. Oh man, that's tough. Yeah. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to my guns. I'm gonna go Kevin Love. I think he chose to go to Miami for a reason. He's actually gonna get um, some significant burn for them. Yeah, Wiseman's like the international man of mystery. Like we, <laughs> you know, he didn't. He only played three games in college. Didn't play much after his rookie season because of injuries. Um, didn't play really at all this season before the Warriors traded him. There was talk about him starting in Detroit. Maybe we get to that point, but if that happens, what do you tell Jalen Duren? So, and Jalen Duren's been great. So, yeah, I, I don't know that that was a clunky fit. They're obviously going to make some moves with that, but like I just don't know that I can trust James Wiseman. Yeah, this he's flashed occasionally, but it's tough, man. Yeah, that's he's the ultimate lottery ticket in terms of this question. Like, I think Kevin Love, even though we don't know fully what his role is going to look like in Miami, right. I have more trust for what they're doing and how they could potentially fit him in than I do Detroit. So I would probably lean Kevin Love as well. All right. Thank you for the questions. That'll do it for Round Ball Stew. We'll see you next week is week 19. And that trade deadline in your fantasy leagues is vast, is fastly approaching. So we'll talk about that some guys we want to target right before that deadline but until then we'll see you next week thanks raf thank you roto world for hosting yet again for round ball stew i'm out peace thank you